We're now thinking of celiac disease in terms of four different types. There's the typical presentation, atypical, which is mostly extra-intestinal manifestations of celiac, the silent, and the latent. In a typical presentation of celiac disease, it's gastrointestinal issues, right? The bloating, the diarrhea, the large stools, the abdominal pain, weight loss, okay? The inability to tolerate things like lactose. The extra intestinal issues, the atypical presentation, presents a very more complicated uh, picture for us and, and a more significant challenge in terms of diagnostics. All right, so you can have a patient who presents with an iron deficiency anemia, and then we start going looking for where the blood loss is occurring, and at a percentage of time, since the first place we tend to go look is the gut, we'll find that they have celiac disease. Dermatitis uh, herpetiformis uh, is a skin condition, and there are other skin conditions that have been associated with uh, celiac disease. It's a very itchy uh, rash, occurs more frequently in males than females. Chronic fatigue. Now, chronic fatigue is this massive umbrella of a diagnosis that there's a whole series of things that fall into chronic fatigue. But you need to look at can we identify what is in fact causing the chronic fatigue in these individuals. Celiac disease represents a percentage of these people, and we need to think about that. Joint pain, okay? Joint pain can manifest anywhere from things that look like osteoarthritis uh, to really significant swelling and, uh, and crippling joint pain. I will tell you that what we do with a lot of our patients with osteoarthritis, regardless of what other, the other labs are showing us, is we'll tell them to go off wheat. Stop wheat. Stop wheat, gluten, for six weeks. At least six weeks, 100% clean, and then let's see whether or not that has helped. And in a significant percentage of the people, it does, even though all the other celiac markers may be negative. Infertility, recurrent fetal loss, again, you're looking for causes that predate or predispose an individual to the development of these problems. You don't always find it, but you need to be thinking about these things. Neurologic disorders. How many of you think about neurologic disorders when you think about celiac disease? One or two, but the fact of the matter is neurologic disorders is one of the more prevalent uh, extra-intestinal uh, presentations for celiac disease, the most common being uh, ataxia, that is difficulty in walking and standing, but neuropathies can be caused by neuropathies or abnormal nerve functioning, okay, and that may be either sensory, uh, in which case you start getting numbness, or it may be pain. Uh, and neuropathies can be caused by celiac disease. Um, so neurologic presentations are uh, one of the things you have to be thinking about uh, as a clinician when you're looking at people and saying, ah, what might be the cause of this? And not simply saying, ah, well, they have a taxi, I've done my MRI, the MRI of the brain is fine, uh, we can move on. So celiac disease needs to be on the list of things you're thinking about. Uh, vitamin deficiencies, which we're going to talk about a little bit more because of problems with the intestine. Remember the thing we need to keep in mind about the intestine is that the, in the small intestine is a very sophisticated filter. It absorbs some things actively, it absorbs some things passively, and it prevents things from getting in actively and passively. If that intestine is inflamed, it's going to malfunction. Things are going to get in that don't belong in, things are going to get out that don't belong getting out and you're gonna have all kinds of problems. So there's a lot of extra intestinal stuff that goes on, and we, people come into our offices, and if we're not thinking about this stuff, we're not gonna make the diagnosis. So we have to be thinking at all times, what's the cause, not just treating the symptoms. The silent form of celiac disease, there is intestinal mucosa damage present. The celiac autoimmunity can be detected in the blood work. There are no physical symptoms that anybody's reporting. Okay? What's that about? That gets about similar to what we see going on with osteoarthritis, where we have people who have pain, we have people who don't have pain. And this is true of most diseases, that there is a silent form of them. The latent form, they are genetically compatible. Uh, they may have autoimmune markers present in the blood work, but their intestinal mucosa is completely normal, and they may or may not be asymptomatic. So this is we're starting to get real fuzzy. So where we started off with a nice, clean definition that it's an autoimmune process associated with ge genetic stimulation or genetic susceptibility and uh, the exposure to gluten, all right, now we're a bit fuzzy 
in terms of making this diagnosis. And we're seeing that the diagnosis, uh, there's a huge percentage of people who actually have the disease, or at least a predisposition to the disease, who are either not manifesting it or have been missed in terms of diagnosis.